so, sometimes you think that contemporary art is only about the market, you know, only about luxury industries, but it's not true. You know, there's so much more to it, and we, as a public museum, uh, we can actually do this kind of thing. We can look at an abstract concept, a difficult concept, through the lens of what actual artists are doing. For this exhibition, I have together with others actually chosen a number of old works. From the beginning, in the years 70, when I began with my uh, artistic production, was it always a comment on the Western society, how I saw it and the aberrations of it. I was actually very excited about it. Herman de Leek, who was a Flemish politician, a Christian Democrat, he, um, he said that the welfare state is not only an institution, it's not only about the economy and politics, it's also an ethics. And I find it interesting to see the, the to think about the welfare state as an ethics. It's something that we are also trying to discuss together with not only with the artists in the show but also with other collaboration partners around the project. I, as a curator and also as a foreign person, you know, don't want in this case to be too subjective about history and, and society. I really was keen to have a collaboration with the people who are experts and who know what's in those archives because they work in them, the four Flemish archives representing the different parties. So for me it was important that I didn't go alone into these archives and just chose things that I found interesting. Bij de welvaartsstaat denk ik, zoals waarschijnlijk veel mensen van mijn generatie, aan de haast idyllische plaatjes van bijna perfect gelukkige gezinnen. Maar ik denk dat dit beeld als geen ander een soort optimisme uitstraalt en een zeker geloof van oké, okay, het komt goed, het wordt sowieso beter. En ik denk dat je de welvaartsstaat eigenlijk bijna niet beter kan omschrijven dan met dit ene, een beetje naïeve, misschien zelfs een beetje onnozel beeld. Dat is het standaardbeeld dat je daarvan hebt. En natuurlijk, na de Tweede Wereldoorlog zijn er een aantal veranderingen gebeurd op allerlei vlak. En ik denk zelfs dat um, die welvaartsstaat een kader gecreëerd heeft waarin dat er ook een aantal mentale, levensbeschouwelijke veranderingen zijn mogelijk gemaakt. De the, the politieke posters die we zien behind me hier, zijn are in een certain sense what you can what the Russians call political technology. They, they, it's how you influence people through image and text. This is part of what artists are doing, but they do it in a different way. I mean, this is this is done in a very almost scientific way. It, it looks like art in some cases because it's made by artists. And it's made by you know graphic artists, typographers. It's well made, but it's made with almost a scientific purpose to influence people. And art doesn't have that um, direct connection. Actually, they represent the dark side of the exhibition. You know, they represent the the, the, the manipulative, um, strategic, visual communication that organizations are are engaging in. Hello, I'm John. Nice to meet you. But I just, I, I really remember her from summer. I'm trying to recollect from photos where I might have seen her. It's basically a work in progress. So it's a novel or a fictional, a fictional novel that's based on historical facts. Pose for a photograph. No. No. People kind of sit in front of me and, you know, there's this... Um, similar po posturing that happens in the photographs and I also begin to posture stories that are not necessarily related to the photographs but that go elsewhere. The stories would shift based on who's sitting in front of me. Uh, the stories would also shift based on which photograph I'm looking at. And, and, and so the, the narration happens in a loop. The big tension here, that, that's also here between the posters, most of all, and the artists' work, is the opinion and, and attitude um, that relates the individual to society. 
I would say the, the, the relation between society and individual is at the core of the concept of the exhibition and we see its surface in many of the works. I try to suggest this uh, building or this technique uh, since uh, three years as a possibility for emergency architecture uh, to host people or to provide shelter to people who has lost their homes in, in uh, war or in earthquakes or in crisis regions. For me, it's going back to the origins of abstract shapes because this is like a, a circle and this is a cube, what you see here, and these are the basic, uh, two basic abstract uh, forms. And uh, actually, I, it, it has two uh, aspects. One aspect is uh, refugee architecture or, or disaster architecture, crisis architecture, to offer this very basic and cheap technique for people who, are, who lost their homes. And the other aspect is uh, to propose an environmental friendly architecture. So the basis is the, the terrible uh, Thing which happened uh, to many people in Syria and so many people lost their homes. So I started uh, three years ago to propose uh, this uh, type of shelter as an emergency shelter. Because I saw that so many people, they stayed in tents or on the streets, so I, I thought this could be a good uh, technique. But at the same time, it has also a symbolic meaning because uh, source of the strength or the energy is, uh, is uh, from a very basic uh, uh, traditional abstract forms. And it's something that contemporary art is also relating to. You know, whether it knows about it or not, it is still part of, of, of a pragmatic, progressive societal order. But progressive in the sense that you move forward without, without too much destruction, you know, to achieve something that uh, a maximum amount of people can benefit from.